Guys, I'm a couple hours from the house. We're gonna drop in here and see if we can't catch some crappie today. It's March 4th and it's warm today. It's in the 60s, 61 degrees right now, maybe getting in the 70s. I think we got a little bit of wind. So it is a little cool when the wind blows, but you know what? That's just life, right? It's the spring. So I'm meeting a fella down here I met on the water uh, one of my other trips and uh, we got to communicating back and forth and he keeps inviting me to come back down fish with him and I promised him I'd come and today's the day. So he's walking up right now and I think he brought me some breakfast. Let's go meet him. Let's go see what he's got. What's up? What you got there? Is that for me? Yes, sir. Hey guys, this is Ty Naps. What's going on? And Ty... He's part of a family who runs a whitetail ranch down here. And man, they got some of the finest deer. I'll tell you what, I maybe let him tell you a little bit about that down the road here. But I'm real anxious to get in the water. And I want to show you guys one other thing. Come on, Ty, I'll show you yeah. too, because we just got this. So guys, I got the blazer in storage, and I got this aluminum low 175. So it's a Stinger 175. What's cool about this boat, two things. I'm pulling it with a Tacoma which helps a lot because it's half the weight of my fiberglass boat. Another thing here on these lows, on these low boats, they have the triple front seating. So it's got three mast, um, I guess you call that mast, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, those seat mast, it's got three positions. So I don't need the Millennium contraption up front and it gives me a lot more room. So I've got a lot more space on the deck. My uh, blazer is about 53 inches across the bow. Um, this is this boat right here just behind the seats is a little over seven feet. So I mean much much more room um, I went ahead and got the uh, cornfield crappie uh, folding Dual graph mount so that I could get the graph up off the floor and look ahead of me instead of down at the ground a lot um, That's about 36 inches at the top of that second graph and then I put a Minn Kota Ultera on here so I can auto deploy the trolling motor that helps me launch the boat so I can just back the boat in the water, let it float off and then I can deploy the motor, spot lock it out there and I don't have to worry about tying it off on a dock. Now I have had a couple buddies lose a boat that way so I've got to be careful doing that. But um, that's what it's for. Now you guys pardon me, this boat's new to me. We've been working on it, trying to get everything put together on it. I've got the sea light transducer pole from for the live scope, obviously the Ulterior on a quick release. The cornfield crappie mount, all that's installed recently in the last week, actually last weekend. I've got these wires um, where I'm kind of tinkering with the length on them. So they're not all tucked away because I want to make sure that I give myself enough length for the trolling motor to deploy and everything to be comfortable and not tight, but yet not have excess. But right this moment, I have some excess. So we're going to clean that up. So I don't want to hear nothing in the comments about how my wires look. All right, guys. Well, there's the boat. There's Ty. We're going to park, put the boat in the water, and we're going to go catch some crappie. I hope. <laughs> Y'all know me. We're going to catch crappie. All right. I'll see you in a minute. lake maps we don't have a GPS signal on that right now but it'll come up here in just a little bit and obviously we got the live scope in the water the Garmin live scope for for you guys don't know what that is it's a Garmin's echo maps panoptics live scope and it gives us what it does is it gives a high rate of return sonar that is directional so we can mount it on a pole obviously shoot out a signal and it comes back at such a high rate of return you get a good resolution on the screen, so it helps you be able to locate fish in an area. I tend to run about 20 foot out in front of the transducer because that's about where the clarity ends. You start running past 20 feet and it starts to get just blurry and it doesn't really help. So for those guys that think that if you go and buy a live scope system, it's like a magic pill and you're all of a sudden going to be a hero, it doesn't work that way. You kind of got to know where to go before you ever drop this in the water. I always tell people, if you don't already catch crappie without this, this isn't gonna help you because you don't already know where to go. Then that's kind of how that works. So anyways, we got a boulder field in front of us. So we got some lay downs, some drop offs. We're gonna just try and hit all this stuff and see what we can do here. 
they're gonna be okay the way this pole works ty uh -huh. is act like it's an arrow shooting into the water so where wherever you're seeing across the top like your live scope five ten feet out and this pole is pointing where that is okay. so they're gonna actually be literally right under the boat I, I mean like literally right right under the boat we'll see like what we got actually there try to pull them off the top though so we don't spook the rest I don't know. I'm trying to find my thing. You're gonna need to be to my to your right. There you go. We, we may touch rod tips. Won't be no nothing unusual. He's chasing it. He's chasing it. Come on, hit it. Oh great! They're gonna be finicky. Just what I want. Finicky crappie. Come on, man. <laughs> That's his face. We don't want finicky crappie. They're spooky today. Got him. There he is. Oh. Still going? Yeah, I got him. There he goes. Oh, that's a nice one. Black crappie. Pretty black crappie. Look at that purple. Pretty black crappie. That's one another reason they're a little bit finicky. It's because they're blacks. Water super clear. Guys, hey, would you hit me those needle nose that are beside you? I keep them on a magnet uh, so they don't ever slide away. Alright guys, first fish in the boat. Pretty black crappie. We get the live well turned on. And... So I switched off that Cajun Cricket and put on a clear bait. And I got a, a strike on a rise. And I also got a strike on a... I got a strike on a rise and a strike in the pile. So... Oh Lord, don't make me regret having no minnows. <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. White crappie, big white crappie. Heck yeah. That's what we're talking about right there. He's right here. Ah. Better click, click this sucker. All right, so we got a mix. They did hit the eighth ounce. Ty went to the bait shop real quick to grab some minnows because these fish are so finicky they don't want to hit the jigs. No color, no size, nothing. So our hope was we could go to live bait and possibly get some of these things to eat. But these minnows are huge. These are dog minnows, big minnows. So we're gonna have to back the boat up. Let's do that real quick. Cause the uh, fish got, oh, what the heck? Fish got up underneath of us again. There they are. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, we this one got him dog nice fish nice fish Woo that's what i'm talking about that's what i'm talking about Even with minnows, these fish are hard to catch. Like, they do not want to get caught. Yeah, I think this one's a good one. Oh, yeah, that's a big sucker. Oh, my God, that's a big one. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. That's a monster. Is that a dog? Oh, yeah, that's a dog. That one right there is a dog. I would put a scale on that fish. I didn't bring a scale today, but hey. Hey, Ty. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. That's a healthy fish right there. Hey, might as well give me a minute while you're standing. <laughs> Be your friend. I got him. I let him sit on it long enough to get it in his mouth. Oh, it's a black. Huh? Oh, yeah, he's in. 
Got him. Long enough, man. He took long enough. Oh. Hey, he just threw a minnow. Look. I saw that. And he's got one in his mouth. Or he just threw it on the deck. There was two. Did you see it? Yeah. So he pulled a minnow off and came back and got another minnow. Well, we had a pretty good day today, guys. Uh, until about an hour ago. <laughs> well, this boat I bought from an older couple and uh, they didn't use it. It's a 2012 model, so it's 10 years old. I don't know how old them batteries are in here, but I'm kind of having a sneaking suspicion that they're about as old as this boat. They have worked for me the maiden voyage. I took it out and then I took it out one other time, but I was by myself. I did run the boat across the lake quite a bit, so I probably got a good charge on the batteries from the outboard. But today, we spent a lot of time on the trolling motor in the river and batteries died, guys. Uh, aerator was on a lot today, keeping this crappie alive and stuff. And I don't know, it just died on us. And uh, my backup battery that I was running the electronics with also was just too low for the engine to crank over. So we're having to go back quite a few miles on the trolling motor. Thank goodness. I have a 24 volt lithium battery on my trolling motor or we would be in such bad shape. There's no boats behind us. We went to all the way as far up the river as we could go. So there's nobody to come help us. And uh, we're out in rural middle of nowhere where there's really nobody on the banks, no towns close and no cell phone service. So we did really good today, let me tell you. Um, I'm proud of myself. Not so much. <laughs> it won't happen again, I can tell you that for sure. Let me let Todd tell you about his uh, ranch that he works on. He actually manages his ranch. So, how's that go? Yeah, it's a family owned ranch. It's uh, Parson Whitetail Outfitters. And we are just breeders, technically. We breed all sorts of exotic animals, but we mostly go around whitetail. We breed some of the biggest whitetail in the United States. Uh, I go on all these expos and we sell semen. Uh, we, we just try to grow our genetics at the Parsons Whitetail Ranch. We try to grow our genetics bigger and better every year. And that's about it, man. That's awesome. That's about it. We had a good day. I didn't show you guys a lot because, well, we try to keep some of this information proprietary to the locals. I don't want to, um, come out here and and blow up you know this place to the point where everybody within a hundred mile radius is out here fishing so we try to try to take care of it so don't put a lot of stuff on camera but we did catch fish we did have a good time and i hope you guys enjoy what what i do put out and i'll see you guys on the next one y'all have a good one just after i shut that camera off we got to visiting we realized we were about six miles up river. We took that river to it was too shallow to run the boat to try to find some white bass that weren't there. And we're coming back because when our battery died was when we just found it was dead. And uh, yeah, that took a drastic turn for the worst and lasted till about two o'clock in the morning. So we made it about a mile back and my trolling motor battery died. And I had no idea that would even happen, but we must have been on it a lot longer than I expected or I thought I did. And uh, once we didn't have trolling motor anymore, we didn't have the outboard, we didn't have trolling motor. We were stranded, literally stranded. We got out the oar and there wasn't any current. So we started to try to kind of paddle our way down to where we think there was a campground. It's a real primitive campground, a lot of tent camping. Um, nothing real solid like not not like a place where you would see a lot of like travel trailers and all that and uh, we got down to that area and we we were paddling against the wind so it was tough like it was tough and that area was quite a ways down we got to that area and there were some campers there and uh, we asked several of the campers to help us and they all said they couldn't help us pretty much would say Either I don't 
have what you need or I don't have anything to help you with or there's nothing nothing I can do and then go walk away and um, so we we were stranded at that point it was getting dark we were running out of light and we were miles from the launch um, so I basically got angry with the last camper that wouldn't help us and he uh, come walking down the bank about 10 minutes later with a headlamp on and by then it was dark and we were stuck on the side of the bank trying to figure out what we could do because that area has no cell service and he said he could call the park manager that manages that primitive campground so he did about 30 minutes later that park manager and his wife shows up and they're a grouchy bunch of old coots and they did not want to help us either he he did help us, but he didn't want to. Um, he was hateful to me. Um, and I, I really, it wasn't my fault. It was an accident. Uh, but he, he, was, he was a hateful old guy. Um, actually, he and I got into it um, over the way he was treating us. And long story short, what we decided to do was have Ty jump out of the boat with this old man. He, this old man volunteered to drive Ty to the launch get a battery out of his truck bring it back and we would use the battery to start the boat and get us back they came back with the battery it was a 45 minute drive there by road and a 45 minute drive back so i sat in the boat in the dark for two hours um it was chilly it was pitch black because there's no lights in that area it's like nothing but stars and moon and there was no moon by the time they got back it was you know it was pushing 10 30 11 o'clock um, at night and we put that battery in the boat we had something wrong and we couldn't figure out what it was turned out to be blown fuses inside the uh, outboard so the battery didn't work after all of that so all we could do was try to take the oar the single oar and paddle our way back up to, to that campground had a cement slab and that old man said we, we would have the ability to pull the boat out of the water using that cement slab. So we end up getting the truck there with the help of that old man um, with a trailer and we were gonna row the boat up there but it was over a mile. So we paddled, I don't even know, like an hour. Um, we took turns, he sat on one side of the boat, I sat on the other and we'd hand the oar back and forth. And uh, that old man came down to the bank after he saw us down there for about an hour and he said, we hadn't even made it halfway. And it was, like I said, it was midnight. And he, that old man said, watching you guys move, you're not hardly moving because the wind's blowing against you. He said, you're gonna have to get out and walk that boat back to the launch. So we're talking middle of the night, pitch black dark, and we gotta get out of the boat and walk it pull on a pull rope all the way back to the launch trees hanging in the water and everything so ty got the front of the boat he got in the water and he hooked on the the uh, dock rope and he's pulling and i'm in the back of the boat keeping the boat motor out of the sand so it didn't bury itself in the in the sand as we were going along so i'm back there pushing the boat away from the bank while he's in the front tugging it along just walking and guys here's a picture of that we got back about 1.30 in the morning, roughly. By the time we got the boat loaded by hand, got up out of that park, it was about two o'clock in the morning and I still had a two hour drive home. Man, it was, it was a bad night. It was a bad day. We made a lot of mistakes. But I can tell you this, keep some emergency supplies with you. We didn't have much food or water left over, but we did have enough. And I had a flashlight, I clipped to my hat, I had a clip on it you could flip around. And uh, I think I have it around here somewhere. Anyways, you wanna always have that. And I had my nine millimeter with me in case we ran into some criminals or mountain lion or anything like that while we were messing with the boat around the shoreline and stuff. The, the banks were stiff, steep cliffs, so it wasn't like we could get in and out of the boat or beach it or anything. It's, it was where we were, you, you couldn't get out. So. It was, it was rough. It was a rough, rough night. We were both extremely exhausted and I don't know, 
you know i made a lot of mistakes on that trip making assumptions about the quality of the boat's batteries the upkeep of the previous owner i, I took their word for it without actually you know really checking everything out and i won't do it again that, that just won't happen again i've currently bought new batteries i bought a dual battery switch perco switch so that i can run everything and be able to switch batteries and not have a dead battery at the end of the day um that's a must you've got to do that and um, i'm adding an extra lithium battery up front just as a redundant piece of equipment for emergencies um, additional food and water we're going to take i'm going to make sure i take a toolkit in the in the boat at all times so we can work on things this is another thing is if we could have taken everything apart we could have probably found out that we had blown fuses and made that battery work, but I didn't even know where to look at that point. So anyways, long story. I know it is. Glad you stuck with me. Now you know what happened. But guys, it was bad. It gets dark about 6.30 and we got out of the water at 2 a.m. After walking in the water for over two hours. So yeah, be careful. You guys be careful. Be smart. You know, I think I'm smart. I've been doing this for years and I still made a huge mistake. And it can happen to anybody. Anybody that's just not paying attention or takes things for granted. And I took things for granted. So I'm not ashamed to admit it because I don't want one of you guys to get in that same situation. Pay attention. Keep your batteries charged. Don't run them down. Get a dual battery switch and run an extra battery and make sure you got spare power for the boat. Be careful, guys. All right? Appreciate you watching. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel and supporting me. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one.